Welcome to Tech Wizard with Amaru. In this video, we are going to learn how to write a variable value or a parameter value to the file on Azure Blob Storage by using web activity in Azure Data Factory. So, um, in the previous videos, I have actually a topic like that where I was reading a um, value from the variable uh, and then uh, writing to the blob storage, but I use copy activity. Um, I feel like this is a more easy approach. If uh, you are interested to use the copy activity, you can go and take a look there. But uh, this uh, this one is, I will say, just a straightforward, easy approach uh, once you understand that what's going on. Now, what we have to do here, we need, uh, first of all, we need a blob storage and uh, we need to perform some configuration on that. And uh, then we can uh, go ahead and uh, start creating our pipeline. Uh, now let's go to the portal here is my azure portal and uh, i'm going to go to the storage account and i'm going to create a new blob storage why i'm creating the new blob storage because uh, i want to provide some permissions to azure data factory on this blob storage so i can call this one blobs tech Brothers storage one and uh, let's create it create our resource is ready. Let's go to the resource and here what we are going to do, we are in this our uh, blob storage and we are going to go to containers here and create a new container in which we would like to create a file. I'm going to call this one input container. You can call it whatever you like. And then the next step is uh, we will be providing a permission on this uh, storage to the, uh, to the data factory. So we are going to go to the access control IAM and here I'm going to add a role assignment. So you can start from here. You can start from here, your choice. I'm going to click add right there, add role assignment. And then uh, what we have to do, we have to look for blob. Once we look for the blob, uh, there is a different type of roles available. In this case, I'm going to go for a storage blob data contributor. Allow for read, write, and delete access uh, to the Azure blob storage and data. So that's pretty much it. It's a high level. You can always give a, uh, just if you want to read and write and all that, you can go in the lower levels of a, um, permission. But in my case, I'm fine with this one. Okay, hit next. And then uh, you go to manage identity, and uh, that's where we are going to select our Azure data factory. So select uh, data factories here and then provide the name of your data factory. It's tech versus uh, ADF in our case. So hit the select and now we should be all good here. Can review and assign. So you can review and assign. Now it is creating right now. Added uh, role assignment. Uh, so if you want to see that uh, where it is, uh, you can always go role assignments here and uh, then uh, you are going to see right there. So that's uh, my, uh, I'm the owner and then we have this. Uh, uh, tech versus ADF Azure Data Factory that has the storage blob data container con contributor uh, role uh, assigned to this uh, uh, blob storage. So have those permissions. Now this is all good and what we can do, we can take this, uh, we are going to copy the blob storage name and go back to our Azure Data Factory here. But before we go, I'm going to take you to the notes. So here, this is a URL you will be using. You will be using your storage name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net uh, container name and file name in my case uh, i am uh, going to use uh, this name we just copied uh, remember so uh, it's called the uh, tech browser storage one and then rest of that is going to be input container that's our container name and uh, if you decide the name file name customer one that's fine or you can just have customer so that's our url then uh, we are going to copy the url and go back to our azure data factory and we are creating a new pipeline in the pipeline what we will be using we will be using web activity so there are tons of things actually you can do whatever let's say you have downloaded some data from other uh, uh, web activity and uh, then uh, you you can uh, actually write to the uh, file by using uh, this uh, method um, you can s create the variable save the values in there and uh, store it uh, on the file so uh, the, the input can be anything but i'm going to show you how you can uh, uh, let's say you have a value saved in a variable then you can uh, uh, write to the file but if your uh, input is coming from uh, some web activity and you want to save that value or payload to the uh, file that this can be also used so we are going to create a variable here and uh, create and i'm going to call this file content variable so in this case uh, it is a string type i'm going to say i might become adf engineer one day okay so that's possible and this is it that's the values i have saved in my file content variable now what i'm going to do i'm going to go to web here and uh, now we will go to settings here and uh, paste the url so that's the same url we just copied from here remember and then we have to 
add these headers though. So XMS version, and then we have to tell the what type of blob we have. So we are gonna go to headers here, paste the name, and then uh, bring another one next, and then copy the type of it, and then paste it right there, and then provide the values. Values are right there as well, so you can just copy paste. So I will put in the description, and then you can just always go ahead and copy and paste from there. That will be easy. So this is a block blob. Fine. So we pasted all those values. Okay, here what type of method we will be using? So we are going to use a put method here. So put method is going to uh, take the variable value and then you know put on our file or write to the file. Here is the body. That's what I was talking about. It does not have to be variable. You can bring the data from any input uh, activities or parameters and all that. So in my case, I have created a variable, so I'm gonna go with variable, add dynamic content, and here is my variable. So click that variable, and uh, that's it. Now you're done on this part, and here we will be providing what type of authentication will be used. In this case, remember that we have provided authentication uh, to our uh, uh, data factory uh, by using manage identity to the storage. So we are gonna use that. And then resource. This is a, just a resource for storage. So this is a URL you will be providing that. Copy, go back to your data factory here, and just uh, you are all good here. So let's debug. As of now, we do not have any file sitting there, so it's gonna create a new file and then write that data to it. So uh, this is completed, so let's take a look on the output response. So that's uh, not a whole lot of information here to see, but uh, anyways, uh, we can go and take a look on the file so go to the tech browser's uh, storage one and here we have container input and the input container should have the file. So see customer file has been created and now you can go and edit and click right there. See, remember that I have written that I might become ADF engineer one day. So that works successfully. So that's uh, one of the thing. Another part I was uh, trying to tell you, let's say you have, uh, um, let, let's say we have a uh, set variable or um, we have a parameter here, right? So in this parameter, I, am, I might will say this This is my parameter value, right? Value, okay? Now, this is a P name, okay? That's the name of it. Now, in the maybe I have set uh, variables here. So in the variable, I would like to set the value. So I can go here and uh, go to variables. And remember that there is a file content variable I created. And uh, I want to set the value of that uh, to some uh, by using the parameter here. So I'm gonna go add uh, p name here. So now my variable is equal to the parameter value. I can simply connect this one. Now here, uh, if you remember that, um, this is not gonna be like a, uh, you have web activity, right? And in the web activity in body, we have used the variable contents last time. We can always go back here. And now we can use, uh, uh, still we can use actually the file content we have because we have set the variables and all that. So uh, that's uh, one way, you know, you use it. Or uh, uh, if you are using any activity such as web and all that, you can change it. So in this case, uh, uh, it is fine. So I created a parameter, saved the value of that parameter to the variable, then used it here to write to the uh, our file. So that's uh, going to be the same, pretty much no, no big deal. Okay, completed. Now if I go back here and I take a look on my file, and the, the content should have changed. Uh, so the parameter value, see, this is my parameter value. So this is how you will be using. Uh, one more thing I wanna show you. Uh, I was saying, in case uh, you wanna bring another, there is a web activity, you are reading the data from the web, uh, and then you would like to save some part of that information to the file on the blob. So you can also do that. See here, in the, the way you say web, uh, you, and uh, then uh, now we go to the body here, and uh, inside the web, we can uh, write web activity dot whatever, let's say response, you know, or uh, if you have any other uh, parts of that output you would like to write, you can do that. So there are tons of opportunity for you once you learn this method, how to write the data to the uh, blob storage by using web activity, you can change uh, the body active, body part of it uh, and write the value of a variable to the uh, file, write the value of a parameter to it, write the uh, values coming from different uh, other activities to the file. Okay, so I hope this video and the tips will help you uh, to build uh, your pipelines quickly. Thank you very much for watching. Please go ahead and subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.